Hey, today I'd like to introduce you to a really cool npm package I found. It's very new, so only 4 to 500 people are using it at the moment, but essentially it allows you to see why your components re-rendered, it allows you to give them names so you can uh, have custom labels and see why they rendered, and I think it bears great potential for improving the quality of your React code. Let's get right into it. So here we are inside of VS Code, but before we dive into the actual code, I want to show you where I found this idea. So it's called React Hook Tracer and I found it on Reddit originally and it's quite new. So at the time I'm making this video, it was posted like four days ago. So it's a very new package and it's essentially just a guy that uh, made his own package um, for tracing React re-renders and I really enjoyed the package when using it and that's why I want to show it to you. So this is the um, npm page, you can see it doesn't have a lot of downloads but that because it's just launched, you know, like 500 people using it, it's not a lot. But I think this um, package does provide a lot of value for your React um, projects. Um, and I don't think it makes too much sense getting too detailed into all of the npm page. But let's dive into the code and actually take a look at how this, per, per, um, how this uh, package works in practice. So the first thing you want to do is um, either npm install or yarn, and I'm not sure why you can't see, there we go, yarn add and then react hook tracer. So you could also just uh, go ahead and copy the, um, the command from right here, the npm at least. And once that is installed, we can start the normal React um, server, so npm or yarn. And normally it start, I change it to dev in my package.json because that's what I'm used to from Next.js. And once you start up the application, we can go to localhost, we see a normal app. And now let's take a look at how you would usually go about, you know, tracing your component re-renders. So you could go ahead and say, you know, app rendered and oops, we don't need that. And that way we could see uh, whenever the component re-renders, right? We can go into the console and we can see, okay, the app rendered once. Now that would get really messy once your, um, you know, once your projects get bigger than one app file, which they definitely will do. Um, so let's take a look at how React Hook um, Trace, I believe it's called React Hook Tracer, um, can help us. So essentially what you do with React Hook Tracer is importing everything you need from like all hooks that you want to use. Um, so for example, you state from React Hook Tracer instead of the normal React. So as you can see, it's just the exact same as if we were importing it from up here. So there wouldn't be an error. The import is just going to be a bit different. And also we want to import the use tracer. And now those two things are going to allow us to do pretty cool things. The state is going to be the exact same. Like we're going to be doing the exact same with the exact same syntax as the normal React state. But when we destructure from uh, something from use tracer, we can take a look at what we can destructure. And that would be trace panel. Now you could also destructure the trace. We don't need that in this uh, instance. And now what the hell is the trace panel? As you can see, it is a normal JSX element. So that means a React component. And that also means we can render it alongside our normal app right here. So we can just have the trace panel be a self-closing um, component. And now let's try it out. Let's see what happens. And when we go into the browser, we can see this is the trace panel. And we can also see some stuff in the console. So you, you don't need to worry about this stuff. Uh, you don't need to worry about this, but the important stuff is right here. So app one mounting, app one render props. We have an empty object because this component is not receiving any props to render. And then app one mounted. So these life cycles are, um, as you might know from the React uh, classes. So we are using React functional components here, but they are similar to the uh, React classes, so mounting and mounted, and uh, what you would nowadays do in a use effect. To really um, take a look in detail at the render props, we can try making a child component.tsx and now take a look at what will change in the console. 
So we're just going to have a child component and let's say that child component is going to receive... Actually, no, that child component is not going to receive anything yet. First, let's implement a little counter. So in the app, let's have a p tag and say counter is at and then have a counter. And then we also want a button that is going to be of type button and that button on click is gonna set counter to whatever it was previously plus one. Now that counter doesn't exist yet and to initialize the counter we are gonna use the use state that we imported from react hook tracer. So we can say const or actually we could use a little shortcut for this we can say counter and set counter it's gonna be a number and that is gonna be you know initialized as just nothing and that is going to be the first argument and that does not seem to work oh because the syntax is wrong so we receive whatever it was previously as the first argument and then we need to return you know the value plus one okay and now essentially when we um read out the page whenever we click the button and the button also needs some text let's say increase counter Whenever we click the button, this component will re-render because we're updating state. And as you know, in React, state will update the component. So whenever we click this button, um, okay, what, what does this mean? Okay, so what happened at this point is I ran into an error that I tried to fix for like one or two minutes. Didn't really work, so I just um, went on the video with an example from the documentation without really understanding why the error occurred. Now, after recording, I messed around a bit and found out that the first hook you want to initialize is the use tracer. So you want to destructure the trace panel from the use tracer, the first thing you do in the component, and then have your state and use effect hooks after that, and not the other way around, because the other way around, then you'll get the error that I was just facing. Okay, I did mess around a bit with the documentation, and this implementation seems to work. I'm not quite sure what the problem was, so if we go back a bit, uh, we can see the structure is pretty similar. Let's just uh, copy it, go forth to the working one, and now if we paste the structure down here, we can see the um, structure is pretty much the same. Uh, so honestly, I'm not too sure why this error occurred. I think it might have to do something with this uh, package being so new, but um, this is how the implementation would work. And so whenever we click the button, um, let's take a look at the, so the app one mounts, it renders with no props, then the state is zero of the um, n, because that's what we call it right here. So as the second argument of the state we can pass it a label and that will show up in the console here so that's really neat and then the app one mounted and whenever we increase the value we can see the state up here we can see how many times it re-rendered and then we can also see how and which state updates in the console so that is a really neat feature and now if we had something like a child component that um, takes like a count that count is gonna be of type number and now let's see what happens so we we're gonna save the child component and we are also gonna render the child component somewhere here and we need to pass the count so that count is gonna be equal to n the state we've set up here and this is by the way the example I've copied from the uh, documentation and okay so we are receiving a count and inside of this child component we also want the um, use tracer which we need to import use tracer from react hook tracer and now we can destructure the trace panel and also implement that inside of our child component so we can see the re-renders a bit easier and now let's go into the um, browser we can uh, take a look at this but let's just delete all of this for now and so whenever I increment the value n right now, so the parent of the child component updates, we can see the app one state n update, and then the new value. We can also see the props it rendered with, and then we can see that the child component one also rendered, and then we can see the props it rendered with, which is really handy if you're trying to improve your code performance or if you're trying to debug where you know some unnecessary re renders are which i guess is essentially kind of the same thing but you get the point right so you can see how many times a component updates um, what it updates to where it updates so it's really handy 
And one example that I thought of was an example I gave in one of the last videos, which was about React component composition. And the basic principle I've prepared in here. So if we get rid of the child component, we can delete all of this and just paste this. And uh, essentially what I've done is I've created a um, blog post component that contains a blog content component. You can see the blog post component right here. Don't worry, it's uh, quite simple. So essentially we're just getting our trace panel. We are defining a state and then we are assigning a, an, an event listener to the document. So whenever we click the uh, blog post component, then the state will get updated and that is just to force a re-render pretty much. And so imagine inside of a blog article, we had like a bar at the top of the page that displayed like the progress we are in the blog post. And whenever you scroll, um, so this is a click event listener, but imagine it being whenever you scroll, an event would fire, this handler would get run and update the state. And whenever the state updates, the component gets re-rendered, right? And that would cause a lot of re-renders for a blog post component that we don't need at all. And uh, that would just make your code worse. And just to see which component renders and which doesn't, we are going to take a look at the trace panel inside of the blog content. And we're going to take a look at the trace panel inside of the blog post. And what you're going to see is really interesting. So if we reload the page, we can see the blog post um, initializes with a state of zero. Um, so that means this state up here is initialized as zero, obviously, because that's what we set it to. The blog post one mounted and the blog content one also mounted. Um, and yeah, these are pretty much just the initial states that we don't need right now. And as you can see, whenever I click the blog post, we can see something really interesting. So the state of the blog post it increases, right? But the blog content one, the children, they don't increase. So that means whenever the blog post one updates, so this component right here, whenever this component updates, the children do not update. And now if you have been working with React for a while, you might know this and be like, obviously the children didn't update. Mm, and yes, that is true. Like that's, that's no secret. But I just want to get the point across that um, you can use this tool really well for, you know, seeing which components render and which don't, even if they're not called children, right? If they're your own components, you can still really easily trace how many times a state renders, why it renders. So why it would be because this state um, updates right here. And we could also remember, we can also give it a name. So we can say label and say uh, click count. And that label would help identify where um, the state gets, you know, re-rendered. So as we can see right here, the state click count updates to two and now it updates to three. And then blog post one changes the props, the children, but that doesn't mean that the content re-renders, right? So the children um, do get updated, but they didn't change. So there are no changes to the virtual React DOM. And that means that the blog content one, the expensive re-render, we don't want to happen on every time we click up here, it doesn't happen. So that's really, really nice to know. And yeah, I think this package might be a great addition for improving your React code. That's pretty much all I wanted to share to you. What I really liked about it is that it's, you know, totally TypeScript compatible. So as we can see right here, if we open an empty object as the second parameter, we can see exactly what we can pass. So we can have the label, the show, the show with the state which is really interesting and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And all we need to do to use this is just um, install the package, get, you know, the trace panel inside of our component somewhere. It doesn't even really matter. And then we can see a lot of stuff. And as you can see, when I read out the page, I think you were able to see before for a second, we can also see the use effect cleanup happening. So it's a really nice package. It's easy to install. And I think it does provide a lot of benefit for your React project. That's pretty much all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for watching. I wish you a lot of fun, uh, you know, improving your React code with this package. See you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.